tonight. So this was supposed to be the last one, but I got sick and it took me like three weeks to get better. I have a cough, but I haven't infected anybody, so and it wasn't um but yeah, I uh I've been really busy lately. So unfortunately these uh, slides aren't as good as they I want them to be. Um and there's uh the actual part about making your own certificate of authority. I, I haven't run through it to document. I did it years ago and have the resource from it. So I might just be reading from a website, or if you guys want, we can do the bill already, like you can do a lot. <laughs> no guts, no glory. <laughs> So it may not be very exciting or maybe too exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it's been literally days since I last embarrassed myself during a presentation. <laughs> you know, I would rather do it in prod than on my official laptop. <laughs> so, you know, for you guys, I can always reinstall. Right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, SSL certs are one of those kinds of things that like everyone deals with, but not everyone knows a whole lot about. Um, and you kind of need to in order to understand what the certificate authority does and to like do your own and why you want to do your own. Um, so this is kind of high level what, what I'm going to go over for tonight. Um, so yeah, what what is it? Like it's a whole bunch of math or crypto. Um, it has a public and private pair. So there's two parts, one's secret, one's public. Uh, and you put them together to do math to validate things, right, at a very high level. Um, and this allows two different systems to trust each other as long as they trust a third party. They both have to trust that same third party. Um, and it's a resilient to in the middle and uh, session replay types. So it's fairly secure. Once you start talking about like quantum and stuff, and then it might not be it. <laughs> That's a whole other topic. Um, but it's kind of like a secret decoder ring, right? It's like you both have your little decoder thing, you both make your code and you shout it out, and no one else in the room knows what the hell you're talking about and, and makes fun of you for it. So, um, what's it used for? It's usually for like trusting identities or systems. Um, so it's kind of like your ID, right? Uh, maybe it's a server saying this is who I am. Maybe it's a user account saying this is who I am. Um, I used it for syslog ng that I need to set up. Um, I want to have my syslogs all sent to a centralized system. Um, so that way I could then ingest them into Elasticstack and actually do queries off of like 50 gigabytes of raw text files, um, which is Big enough, your text letters just don't want to open. So, <laughs> and that's that's fair. That's fair. Um, so yeah, websites HTTPS uses search, right? SSH uses search. Um, they'll use search to establish uh, SSL TLS session, and then optionally you can use a search to over that session to say this is my identity. This should not be. Um, you can try faking it, which is, you know, like McLovin here is trying to fake his identity. Uh, and his uh, trusted third party he's trying to use there is the state of Hawaii. So, um, SSO will use a lot of this stuff, like LDAP, Active Directory. Um, I don't know, throughout examples, if you guys know stuff I should have on here, it's used a lot. Um, I also have a very loose presentational style, so just speak up. If you want to add your two cents, if, uh, if I'm wrong or missing something, just shout out, let me know. I think even Kerberos actually uses them. So if I, it's been a while since I've dug down that rabbit hole. Yeah. And also don't. <laughs> Good advice. The answer is like, if there's like, if there's this identity somewhere, like even like software signing, Mm -hmm. Like if, if there are entities that were saying this person that is, there's probably running out there somewhere. Yeah, sign stuff for is a perfect example of that. Email, and I would assume yeah. DNS tech. Yeah, there's some sort of, yeah, you first search in entertaining ways. And, Isn't that like a text record or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's a text record, but it's, it's, it's <laughs> always, but it's like, if you look at how they're stored, it's always like, it's a pretty weird record. That just sums up all of 
DNS. <laughs> that is the energy. So like, like they, they, they store data in funky ways. But they, that's a whole other presentation. Yeah, yeah. I ended up with a Cyrus Slack chat earlier today for these DNS is weird. <laughs> uh, so today I'm going to talk about OpenSSL. Um, there are some other SSL things out there, but they're not as popular. Um, and I don't know if they're open source. So. But uh, the type of cert we usually are talking about technically is an X509 cert, which is the uh, protocol or specification for it. This is kind of the more common stuff of it. There's a serial number to need to that cert. Um, you'll have like a subject uh, or a certificate name on it, um, just saying like, this is what I am, right? Um, and we're going to look at some examples that will make more sense here. But subject to alternate name is an optional thing that you can do to have one cert for many things. Definitely required. Uh, the field is required, they can be empty, right? No, but you the, at least for web browsers. Yeah. Your modern web browser will not look at the end. It will just, it has to be in the And that's been true for a surprising number of years. There's some, you do have to put a stand if you want to buy a web browser. Okay. Uh, it might do that by default then with just one entry. But yeah. But your stand can be multiple entries. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so there's an issuer. Um, or the I. So, yeah, some of these, if you're looking at uh, cert data, they'll abbreviate this. So, I try to put the abbreviation next to the thing. There's a not before and a not after, just saying like when is the certificate valid. Um, you'll often see organizations if you're looking at details. And so, that's like, um, you know, it could be the company that you're that you belong to or like a, a department within the company. Uh, if you have like an internal certificate authority, um, you can see that. Um, or it could be like there's a lot of certs that I've seen in the wild, um, for, like Linksys or VMware or whatever that will have an OU listed in there as well. Um, so maybe they'll ship an appliance, not a default cert on that, and the default cert might the subject name might be uh, like a randomly generated host name, and the OU might be uh, VMware or Broadcom now or whatever. Um, well. Public key is, uh, no, I copied that from somewhere. I don't understand it. I'm also kind of out of it, so. Uh, the key, the crypto part. Is it? Yeah, that it is the yeah. actual key. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it would be the, the, yeah. And then there's can be um, some different crypto listed of like which algorithms they used to sign and verify different parts. And then that all comes together with the, the signature algorithm. Um, well, they'll hash the whole cert and then the signing of it to, to verify that the signing is real. Um, there's a lot of different file formats that get used, especially if you're going from like Linux to Windows. <laughs> wow. I feel among friends. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Okay. So yeah, the pain in the ass when you, when you make your Linux cert and give it to the Windows person, they're like, I don't know what this is. Uh, and then you have to hold their hand. <laughs> uh, Mac is a little weird too, but uh, I haven't worked with it too much, but it seems friendlier. Uh, there's the base ASCII part that's basic support encoded. You can literally just decode and look at the data. Um, there's the binary files that like your web browsers and stuff will want to look at and read and some of your applications. Um, I think you can base 64 to code the binary too. Could be wrong. Anyway, uh, CSR is a certificate signing request. Um, so when you're making a certificate and you want it to be signed by somebody, um, which could be yourself if you're your own certificate authority, mm -hmm. um, or if you like, I don't know, we're running a website and you want like a real, <laughs> real company to vouch for you. Like you make a CSR, give it to them, they would sign it, return you the key that you want to use. Yeah, public key. And so part of the infrastructure that makes a lot of stuff work, you have your root certificate authorities, which there's only a few of them out there in the world, but publicly trusted ones. These ship by default on all of your operating systems and your web browsers. Um, they 
I think they are managed separately between the OS and the web browser, which is why sometimes you'll get a weird disconnect. It depends. Yeah. It depends. Some some browsers like Firefox definitely think about Chrome. Usually trust the system server, which is partially because uh, yeah, they got tired of dealing with a bunch of the corporate man in the middle. Uh, Problems, so they just said, Yeah, you know, your, your corporate overlords will inject your, their own CAN and yep. we'll just trust it. Yep, um, yeah. he's good. and that's a really good use case for this talk, too. It's <laughs> like, All right, so you made your own secret authority, now you have to keep your things to trust it, which is kind of out right? the scope. I, guess. <laughs> I didn't get to that slide, people like that, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, yeah, you can import the, your root CA. Um, into things like your your browser, your OS, and that way your system trusted. Um, depending on what the use case is for it. Um, when I was doing it, it's for syslog, and so I was never going to hit it with a web browser. So, um, so the root ones are like really highly guarded <laughs> and important. And without them, uh, the internet the networking would fail pretty pretty much. Uh, or at least you, you wouldn't be able to trust it. Which is sometimes. And when they change, it's a very, very big deal. You know, when um, a root gets uh, removed for doing shady things like the Chinese government. Or semantic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter root CA gets hacked in their private site and he's released. Yep. Yeah. That one, uh, Google just announced they're going to depreciate uh, one of the certificate authorities, and so I think any I can't remember who it is, but I think it comes in October. The, they're going to give like a one year grace period um, to let people find a new certificate authority and resign their certs. And, and also going around that thing, it's also super bad. Chinese companies are being the Chinese people think was resign who got banned by the by, the, by the Google Mozilla. Yeah. And then started back adding their certs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the work is that they say certs issued after right. band date is when they is what will only be trusted. But you know, if you're a really really sketchy CA, you just say, Oh yeah, all our certs were issued, you know, before the date we got banned. So when they yeah, what's the <laughs> but they're also capped for a certain period of time too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the name of the company was Entrust. That's oh, right. And apparently Turn Trust as well, which is the same company. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was um Entrust was pretty big. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember they had a, like a lot, a lot like you know when people love to put you know little badges saying we got verified for us as Like I remember saying their name a lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's true. That was like a very early 2000s thing. And the semantic badge that was on the sites too. Uh, so are they going to rename to D-Trust? Or <laughs> Dust Trust? Or... Oh yeah. It takes forever. Like when less encrypt, like it takes, it takes literally years to like, if you want a new CA, like if your certificate is expiring in like 2030, uh, you should be thinking about now of how to get your roots out there for the next 10 years. Yeah, your search uh, used to only be for two years from those major providers, but Apple started the trend of doing it for one year, uh, and Google and everybody else. Started. Yeah, I'm running on the roots here. Like, if you're, if you're, if you're a roots here and you expire in the year 2030, like, you have to be thinking, like, now of, like, how are you going to get the cert out by 2030? And uh, Justin's point of... Uh, uh, also, um, legacy stuff in the the chain, uh, like old Android uh, handling. Uh, let's encrypt. Oh yeah, it, because let's encrypt got really trusted is wild. There's some like weird cross signing from someone. Like the way that encrypt really got started was weird. I think started using that. Let's encrypt <laughs> is still a very trusted CA, and yet Google is having to kick out. Corporate entities. Well, the thing is, like, a lot of those, like, corporate CAs, the way they run their business is very much like, you know, like what he said, you chuck a CSR to someone, and, you know, along with money. Along with money. <laughs> and, and then some human reviews it, and uh, maybe their tooling isn't up to snuff. And, like, 
what's important? They have all that automated. It's like they have a very specific process of how you verify your domain. Like not verifying stuff is how you get the browser's matic. Well, and let's encrypt is also uh, kind of only partially trusted. Yes. Yeah. It's also uh, depending on what country your uh, uh, certificate authority is. Uh, they are more susceptible to uh, rubber hose cryptography. Uh, yes. Request from the, the government. Yeah. But yeah, some of those CAs that got in trouble were, were essentially taking bribes to like verify things and get stuff out there. It's like, um, it's like hey, if you, if you take some money, we give you a Google.com wild card, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't do wild cards in any of our sites. I know sometimes there's a reason for it. It's bad. If that circuit's stolen, it can be plucked up anywhere else, then now they can be used. Um, yeah, speaking of Let's Encrypt and partially trusted, there's some different security tools out there that will detect an alert on a Let's Encrypt cert and you can block connections to them. And some of the more, um, we'll call it security conscious, more family people will do that. So uh, if you're a more reputable site, you really shouldn't be using Let's Encrypt. Um, like reputable, like, I don't know, you're, a giant retail company or a financial service company or something. Yeah. Major bank. Yeah, major bank. <laughs> Probably don't want to be using Let's Encrypt for major bank. But if you're Stack Overflow, because Stack Overflow now uses Let's Encrypt. What if you're Cloudflare? Because Cloudflare uses Let's Encrypt. Uh, so you, you have the option of not using Cloudflare's search. You can, you no, know, but I mean, yeah. Cloudflare uses Let's yeah. Encrypt. <laughs> yeah, they're also known to uh, safeguard all sorts of malware sites. So, like, there's another reason to treat any of their content as a little bit scary. Yeah, yeah. Sure. they're a good service. I like them, but <clears throat> yeah. But also, Cloudflare, like, they, they will like, like, if you're on the free flip tier, you you may not you may get less encrypt, or you might get a, they have a couple of different authorities that they readily use. So you might get one from Google Trust Services. You know, it just kind of depends on the day and which uh, node you end up hitting. Yep. Well, Cloudflare is a great service if you're looking to validate that someone's actually human before letting them do your phishing site. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Anybody else, please? We only want the users to check the box and have the test. I actually say that. Uh, yeah. That's not like the majority of phishing pages that I run in Austin. Yeah, like, they, have, they have an actual patch check. Yeah, I wrote a detection to detect Cloudflare on the site. Nice. So people be flagging this potential pitch. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is more like, like a, a shove, like a phishing thing into a, you know, a URL detonator. And it's like, you have to put the box. Well, not to be confused with the phishing site. It just kind of needs a gift that, that spins when you click it. That's the capital. Cloudflare <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, has some really cool anti phishing stuff that doesn't even require user interaction. <laughs> it, it's just smart enough to like, Detects Perl versus a browser, essentially. So um, your automated scanners that are more realistic and use like Selenium or something will look at higher than a lot of these. But you can't do the ones that require user interaction, like clicks or um, some of the Google captures that they've got. Um, anywho, you can get your bird CAs uh, that, that are super trusted. Your intermediate CAs are kind of like agents of the root because. Uh, They'll, they'll do the actual Google <laughs> requests out there. Um, so that way the root isn't actually verifying things. Um, and then you'll have your leaf or like the, like if you make a CSR for your website, so you have your own server on there, it goes to intermediate. And because they have, they're trusted by the root, they can sign. So those three things together make up like a trusted searching. When you look at chains, you can actually have multiple intermediates. I've seen, I think up to like four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, if any one in that chain is not trusted, the entire trust chain breaks, mm -hmm. and that cert isn't trusted. And our web browsers often aren't smart enough to know that that's happening. They'll be like, one end of the trust chain is fine, so it's cool, and it doesn't quite show you errors sometimes. Uh, so it can be a real fun troubleshooting thing, but also you have to do that. Yeah, Python actually will throw errors if the nice. whole chain is not trusted. Nice. Because uh, I ran into uh, a server that had one of the, the intermediates uh, wasn't, it had expired, even though the rest of the chain was still good. And yeah, that broke everything. Yep. <laughs> As it kind of should, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but it, it makes it really hard because most people want to do their cert management if they do any kind of cert management. 
Um, they don't look at the dates of their uh, intermediate or roots yet. Like you were saying, the roots yet is expiring in five years, like or six years, like it's a time bomb, right? Yeah. Yeah, in my case, I ended up just forcing it through because it was an internal site and it was like, I don't want to do it. What you don't finish and you don't put, you don't put legitimate, you know, driver certs on embedding devices that are used for building on it? Come on. <laughs> that's a whole yeah, that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> so last point on the slide. The certificate revocation list is a really cool thing. Um that's part of that PKI, PKI or public key infrastructure. Um, so if you have a cert and it gets stolen and you don't want people to trust you anymore, you can put on this certificate replication list uh, and your operating system browser will periodically check for that, um, usually at startup. And uh, it'll be like, hey, are there any certs I shouldn't trust you anymore? And if there are, it adds it to the list and uh, then I'll trust it. There's been some. Uh... Over the years, the effectiveness of CLR of the of the revocation list have been yeah debated. Like, there's definitely sites like yeah, this is revoked and web browser just goes. Yeah, um, a lot of them don't seem to check it very often or um, parse it properly or something. Yeah, it well, seems like it's uh, theoretical and not testing. <laughs> it's a really good idea, but like the actual implementation, unfortunately, seems to be well, like many things in BKA is a lot of like <laughs> this isn't a full design, but. The actual implementation leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, that's fair. Also, for anything PKI that is not web browsers, revocation is even worse by like orders of magnitude. So, yeah, if you have like SSH, for, I, if I understand right, SSH certs don't even support revocation. Like, you can tell them that there's no mechanism built in to check. That's true. So, Sure, put it on the list. Yeah. But yeah, web browsers are bad, but everything else is worse. You might be able with an active directory to push out a, a revocation list for like hosts and stuff. Yeah, but you no. have, you'd have to build it. Like it's not it's not there. There are ways that you can do it. You can write a strip to check and this, that, and the other, but yes. yeah. It's, it's, uh, just don't let me get stolen. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I will say the Windows one. Windows, because the one place where I might have a hope in the prayer where it actually might get checked. Right? Yeah. All right. So uh, well, let's take a look at some certs, right? Um, the command that I like a lot is the OpenSSL as part. Um, Oh, there we go. So within here, we're checking our CA log website, right? Um, commands OpenSSL S underscore client dash connect, and then you can list the uh, domain or IP colon and the port you want to check on, right? So this will make uh, an OpenSSL connection. We'll do the handshake and everything and then show you the certificates for that. So from within here, we can see that the um, issuer org is Let's Encrypt, uh, and it's part of a um, chain within the Internet Security Research Group, which is the, the route that um, Let's Encrypt uses. You can see that chain right here, that they're all listed. Um, and then we actually get to see the base 64 contents of the, the cert itself. Um, so often if you look at um, the, the ASCII certs, the whole file will just be everything between the begin cert and end certificate. Uh, so you can just open them in a text editor or copy them around, send them to your email. Um, if you probably shouldn't send them to your email, actually. <laughs> <laughs> They're certificates, so like I mean, they're designed to be public. It's the public yeah. one, yeah. If it's the public uh -huh. one, yeah. But then it should be on your website or whatever. People should grab it directly from the source. Um, yeah, and you can also grab those and just dump them into your uh, trusted root CA uh, file and just drop them yep. that way. Uh, especially if you're having to fight the scaler. <laughs> 
Yeah. Or um, like, let's say you have GitHub or GitLab and you're worried about developers doing something like that, just dumping it into their application code. Um, you can go search for this. Just search for the, you know, the string like begin certificate with those dashes. See if that shows up in your code base. If it is, you might have a problem. Yeah, or, or you know, the, the wrong one. If you see, you know, the five dashes, and then you know, begin private key. You know, yeah, <laughs> maybe have a real cover. That's my favorite. <laughs> I mean, the begin certificate part. You can probably do that if you want to pin your certificate or something like that. That would be one way that you could do that if you were uber paranoid. Which like mobile apps do that a lot. If it's the public, yeah. Yeah. Like right one, don't do that, you're bad and you should feel bad. But but then again, like how do you change that in a year or one year? Like no, for mobile app, you do an update. Like some mobile apps that like they pin their search. Like if you like try to go say hey, I'm gonna go send a mobile app up through you know burp speed, you'll get kindly told to pound stand because they check they pin the public key or public public pinning to make sure you can't do it this time. Yeah, you can do it like it's just yes, so yeah. Uh, yeah. So other parts insert you have your subject, which you don't see as CN. So that's sort of the site, cnmark.org. It is uh does not say www though. I distinctly went to www. That's the same having fun. Yeah. Um so again, issuer C is the country code, O is the organization. Uh I don't I don't remember what this part means, but that's the that's the common name of someone in the chain, I assume. Yeah, so that would be like E6.let's encrypt that whatever. Okay. Actually, this is actually this common name is just E6. That's not a domain name. The common name is just E6. Right. But it's from let's encrypt. Yeah. Not yeah. The site from the organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um and the also be like a human name. You could, you know, put, put any name in there, like you're just doing like personal search. Like that could just be a a, a name. Yeah. Or user you, name. You could yeah. put the EI car string in there. Yeah. You could. If you're... Okay. Um, so, uh, another cool thing is that, uh, that OpenSSL command will do is like show you the level at which it connects. So, like if you're testing a server for different versions of SSL or, S or, sorry, SSL or TLS, you can actually uh, make the request for that specific version and see if the server comes back. So, that's another good. Test if you're trying to like eliminate SSL 3.0 or things like that. Um, so as you can see, some of the ciphers that are being used within the connection itself. Uh, yeah, it's not not too much anti uh, ciphers. But if you have an like an error in that trust chain we were talking about earlier, you should see it. Here. Yeah. Like, I think it's big letters like not trusted or something. Yeah, I, I can't remember what it is, but it does look very profound. Yeah, you can't miss it. <laughs> um, you know what? In, in very worst case, just do a curl to whatever uh, what service you're trying to pull down and uh, with HTTPS on the front of it, and it will blow up in your face. Okay. Well, I don't know why my copy paste is being difficult, but because you need chip around in there. Uh, I don't That's the one that always gets me. I'm like, dang it, I didn't mean say control C and then control shifts. No, I like right click to copy it on the not on the yeah. That's, <laughs> it's gonna be one of those days. I think I'm too used to a Mac journal now because I have to use Mac for work. Um, and, uh, and I don't hate Macs as much as I used to. So that's nice. The one I said about Macs is that they reserve the control key for Unix. They use the you know the super key for yeah, copy paste. Yeah, I'd be okay with it if they didn't put plot the order of these two keys. I used to hate that. Now I've over it. It's it's like closer to the, the like C and C. But it's C. If, if I used a Mac for long enough, it might, but, but it's just muscle memory for me. We'll just go into the settings, you can swap the order. Yeah, but then I have to remember to do that. You do most of the time, you do most of the time when touching a Mac, it's not on Mac. Oh, it's their problem. And I'm just trying to fly through and fix things, and yeah, <laughs> they don't fly through and fix things. Uh, another really good site if you don't have access to the command line or you need something more like I don't know, management friendly is OpenSSL uh, Labs. Or sorry, SSLLabs.com. <laughs> Jim Qualis. 
is actually really, really nice. Uh, and there's an array. Awesome. I can't hit a new tab. Guilty. <laughs> So you can just go here, test your server. You can check mark the box if you don't want it to be public for whatever reason, although I wouldn't trust that. Um, <laughs> but you can, I mean, call us will have it, but like they may not put it publicly on their website, right? So, because um, normally when you come here, it'll show you recent checks that people have done. There's a nice wall of shame as well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you've ever worked with people in management, they know green is good. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. uh, so good. So if you ever you know what a woman like, we don't have a green on SSL ads, there are certs like this is probably what they mean. Um, but yeah, you can check for all sorts of really awesome uh, SSL cert stuff on your website. And it'll give you a huge amount of data uh, within here. It'll even check some different protocols and cipher suites, which is really nice. And tell you like if it'll break the users using a new version of Android or something. Oh, that's cool. Um, they have seen this old like beast pool attack that like, hasn't been relevant that many years, but it's still there. Um, is it, it's still running, it's still running around the internet for some unknown reason. Yeah, like old uh, IoT devices that people don't update, stuff like that. Um, yeah, anyways, this is super handy, useful site, definitely recommend it. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is kind of like the PTI overview uh, in a graph that I shamelessly stole from the from Austin site. Uh, this guy's site had a whole lot of like really handy OpenSSL commands that you can use as well. But that's basically what I was talking about between like root, intermediate, um, the types of requests that you would generate and where they go. Uh, it's not clear, but the very top at the end is like, ta da, you have your public cert that you can use. And this is the part I ran out of time to do. <laughs> not, I've been super busy, uh, but the um, this guy's kind of site right on the bottom here uh, is what I'd used uh, years back when I set this up, um, and it, it still holds true. I, I would say the one thing that's probably changed in that time is your certificate expiry length. Um, it used to be like two years. Now it's one year. If you do if you are too much longer than like one year at a time for anything that. Is going to be used by a web browser, uh, they might not be trusted. Yeah, like 13 ish months, like you would get away with about 13 months. And then, yeah, even if it's valid otherwise, like if you like to do two years, and it's an extra, like, actually, backdating once again comes in. It's at, mm -hmm. if you have a certain data, web browser will check it. Yep. And the one argument is that if you're going to have to replace it, you should do it more often than even just one year uh, automated and do it every 90 days or whatever. Yeah. Now that's what that's my lesson for is like yeah. we do it every 90 days. It's often enough basically like, it's annoying to do you just automate it makes it often enough to get automated. That's kind of like the goal that yeah. you and do do that thing that hurts often enough and it won't hurt. Right. Hopefully. Um maybe I said that you're like thinking if, if oh yeah we'll put my you know my brand is we'll change my server on my VM or it's yeah that's a uh, fun time. <laughs> yeah. So um, there's some really important like configuration details that you can save within your OpenSSL out file. Um, this the locations for you based on your choice of distros. Um, you can help like automate some of that stuff because it'll ask you like which organization they are in, um, all sorts of like you know what country, what state, all sorts of annoying details you don't have to like type in every time when necessarily. Pass into your script every time, so you can just hard code that in your cell file and not have to worry about it. Um, when I had mine set up, I made this script uh, anytime I needed to make a new cert. So I would just pass the host name in for the new host that I was adding to my uh, syslog. 
group, uh, and then it would run the following commands. You just like make a new key. Um, they make M keys, and then for me to help remember, I thought I thought I had named some like public and private, but I'm not seeing it in the script for whatever reason. I think I might have changed that afterwards. Yeah, I think I renamed those files afterwards so I could tell just to public the private because the the file type doesn't differentiate between that at all. <laughs> and you don't want to put the wrong one in the wrong place. Um, you know, one of the parts of running the, the certificate authority is um, you'll have like your root signing key uh, or your intermediate signing key. Those are like the, the important thing. Um, if that gets stolen, then anyone can sign a key uh, as that certificate authority. So you have to be exceptionally careful and secure with that key, um, which is usually why the root level ones uh, aren't even Probably on a internet connected machine, mm -hmm. they right. they'll be locked in a vault. Air gaps. Yeah. Yeah. Like punch card. Yeah. yeah. Like it's usually an HSM, don't they? Uh, usually. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 And like and like usually because of like you know access to our list like in Luna environment, usually you know bring out your root CA once a year, boot it up, sign a bunch of things, and then by sign a bunch of things you take a flash drive to it, put on the CV design, and then. You know, walk you know, walk it off with the flash drive again. Yeah, so uh, I I would recommend putting them on a flash drive. Um, maybe make a copy and have like two flash drives in case there's a hardware failure or something. But um, that way it's like not even attached to the computer and like can't be taken. Uh, and then keep it in a safe or something. But this is more like I've used them doing some all time stuff. Not like I want to start up my own and trust level certificate authority. Like. Um, if you're just doing stuff for at home or like a small business or something, um, this is perfectly fine to just roll your own, keep it on a USB device, it, depending on how security conscious you are and how important the thing is that you're securing. Um, security is something we occasionally think about. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us more than others. Some of us are paranoid. Yeah, yeah, that's true. For a good reason. <laughs> That is not <laughs> um, I had my signing key on the same box that uh, all the syslog stuff fed into with my elastic print in. So it's like, if you're on this box, uh, you can steal all that certificate data anyways. And I really don't care if you steal this key. Like, all you can do at that point is read the same log, log information that you already have access to. Um, and because all I was using it for was to encrypt my syslog data across the network and to authenticate as well um, as part of that it wasn't very important. So even though I'm security conscious, like that was my threat model and so it worked for me. If you're doing something like your own SSO for like your family and you have your own certificate authority, then I'd be a little bit more paranoid like, about that. If you're like a medium-sized business, you may also want to go do some more. Yeah. Well, no one outside of your business will trust it. Really. Right. So I think that often internally you do want a yeah. internal CA. Yeah, especially if you're signing code. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I think like it's in the more like time sync, time, like time, like stirs that note time and like we're just talking about the well, time that it was signed or yeah, start to open to fun things that we're signing. Um, so. This was the guy's site, uh, jamielinux.com, who had some, like a really excellent tutorial. As you'll see it's from like 11 years ago. <laughs> really, other than the little things you mentioned, like nothing's like, changed. Like, nothing's like, running a CA is probably the same for the past like 30 years. Yeah. So, other, than, like, the, other than like the crypto you use is like things significantly, but like, the fundamentals are the exact same. Yeah, you, you should know. probably use the right elliptic curve or stuff like that. Unless you're in a FIPS environment, then you can't use that. Yeah. But if you're in a FIPS environment, you're probably not going to be creating your own CA. <laughs> yeah, you'll be, you'll, you'll be The DLD will be saying, here's your, here's your CA you will, will be missing. Yeah, very nice guys in black suits will hand you your uh, certificate. <laughs> yes. Or so, and it's like, and then, you know, either one. 
Yeah, yeah those guys might be in uh, camouflage suits. Mm -hmm. So those things work weird. Yeah, PFF was one of the battle formats, right? Yeah. So you can store them on a Yuba key. Yeah. 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 I wonder how many websites there are using a Yuba key to decrypt their SSL, their TLS. Well, now that you can use them as pass keys, and all sorts of the big players are adopting it. Mm -hmm. Actually, that would be an interesting thing. You could store your CA key on a YubiKey and then just throw that into the, the safe. Yeah. Um, well, not well, a great access. Yeah. <laughs> what well, you create it and then you send it to YubiKey. Yeah, like, like, right. But do you ever need to retrieve the private key again? You should never need it. Like, going like, as long as you can use the YubiKey to like sign things with that key on, you know. Well, what I'd want to do is I'd flash multiple YubiKeys and then okay. probably put one on a, a copy of it on a thumb drive, and that's like in the super secret gotcha. uh, bunker safe or my garage, whichever one. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would work. Um, but like the passkey thing is a really interesting use case for that that's happening right now. Like um, I had to set one up recently. It's pretty seamless, but it works. Like it's got a certain <laughs> thing. Uh, what is that? What is that? What is that? Uh, yeah. Uh, so through virtualization and stuff, it's not the device isn't always passed through properly. Um, so it's not always visible. But like if you're doing stuff locally, it works pretty well from what I've seen. Um, when the site supports using that passkey, like it's, it's seamless. So you go to log in, they're like, hey, you know, uh, do you, how do you, what kind of passkey do you want? Is it a phone or is it like a, a YubiKey type device, a USB? Um, and because you can do it USB C, you can do that in your phone super easy. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Um, although a bunch of things are broke for that, I've discovered. Oh. Yeah. Like, I never remember which one, but either GitHub or GitLab refuses to work in Chrome from my phone using the key. And like a bunch of apps that in theory support YubiKey freak out if you plug them into USB because they're expecting an NFC. Really? Yeah. Mm. So it's it's like so close because like they recognize it, they see the device, they're like, all right, touch it. And then it's like, no, nah, you failed. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of, like, especially on mobile, there's a lot of like, I mean, you know, I was, that's where, you know, NFC creators. And if, and if you're running a non stock Google OS on it too, like if you're running, for example, Red Bean or Posit, oh, yeah. or not Posit, uh, Alex, then it just doesn't work at all. Like it has the USB disabled. That is. Sorry, I'm just trying to disable the bar that you've got. No one else can see it. You can slide it out of the way at the very least. Uh, it's still in the way somewhere. <laughs> yes. I love how the screen is like, just like swipe slab where it's at. Yeah, they're like, we're not going to show up, but we're going to show up the context and then we're going to talk. Thanks, Matt. All right. Zoom, Zoom, on the next video too. Yeah, Zoom is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Hey, it's worth the money you're paying for, but it's better than Teams. Zoom. Zoom is the reason that Zoom is no longer working remote. I did read a fun with a uh, user who, uh, unrelated to Linux, uh, uh, speaking of working from home, uh, that Dell apparently had their big like employee uh, morale survey. <laughs> uh, let's just say they had the fastest drop of morale that anyone using that survey has ever seen just because of their uh, hijinks that they've played lately. Yeah. Also, if you want to do it for this, start to get stuff. If you use a open sense or a PS sense, there's a really nice interface for running your own third party out of the, the firewalls. What is it, the obscure stuff? No, but if you're looking for stuff like a test blog server or some really basic, you know, author networking, it probably works. Yeah, well enough. Yeah, I, I 
just the, the thought of running your CA from your, your firewall just <laughs> <laughs> makes me twitch. You know, the firewalls need to have problems. Are we? I don't want to interrupt if we're still presentation, but if that's end of presentation, I, then yeah, I'll just say the result of this easy RSA thing that I saw that I don't know anything about, but it seems to be like the super easy way to be your own authority. I mean, that's for two. It's like one thing I open up, open VPN servers, it's easy enough. It makes it makes it to the office. I can be arcane uh, open the cell command because open the cells command line interface is horrible. Yeah. But I like the arcade. So yeah, that's that's it every chair. Go for it. Okay, here I can hit stop then so we can do the the after uh, shenanigans here.